Proverbs chapter 22. I want to minister for a moment a mini message called There Is No Middle Class. I thought I'd get a better reaction than that. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7, it says that the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. I want to start a mini series today. So if you're online, uh, we're going to have the worship team come in a moment. We're going to sing and worship God. And then we're going to preach uh, the main message, which is a prophetic message. So hang tight, uh, stick in there with us. But God has been, uh, you know, dealing with us. And we've gone in a, in a, in a direction to build out in our consciousness his desire to see us win financially in life and not to struggle. Concerning our financial prosperity or lack thereof, the Bible only talks about two groups, the rich and the poor. My question for you today is which one are you? That's a very interesting question to be asked, particularly in America, where we have a so-called rich and poor and a middle class. Now, from my study in the Word of God, I only see the Bible talk about two groups. There's the rich and the poor. Jesus himself came to preach the gospel to the poor as well as to heal the brokenhearted and to do a number of other things. And so I hope you uh, don't shy away from these teaching times because what I am doing is preaching the gospel, good news, to the poor. So the Bible really only talks about, the, there are two groups, the rich and the poor. Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. Evidently, he wasn't referring to the poor as his disciples. But the rich and the poor are these two groups. So I'm starting a new mini series today. I won't be able to get much of it done. Amen. But come on back and we'll do it again. And you might be listening and find yourself in what you think is a good place financially. So when I'm up here talking about abundance and prosperity and increase, you may think, well, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, re I'm actually in a good place. I've got a good job, a good home. I drive a good car. And then because you're in a good place, you don't find yourself in the scripture as it relates to God's will for your life. And so you don't listen well in that particular moment. Obviously, if you're in a place where you're hurting financially, then you know, hopefully you've been enjoying these times where we've been talking about coming up to another level. But I, the, the concern is this. If you don't see that you have a need to come up financially, then you won't believe to come up better. Amen? So please understand this. As I challenge you with this thought, there is no middle class. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Middle class is a construct designed by the rich to make the poor think that they are not. The middle class is a construct designed by the rich to make the poor think that they're not. There is a tremendous amount of indebtedness in our nation. We get excited about so-called economic impact stimulus checks, not realizing that our country is going deeper and deeper into debt by the tune of trillions of dollars. There was a huge shift in the country, 
years ago when more and more people began to borrow. There used to be a time when cash was king, but now it's all about your credit score. How much can you borrow based on your amount of income? Then when there's an attack or when, when things, there's a downturn in the, in the economy, people find themselves in a really bad place because they borrowed against the future not knowing what trend or tide would turn. So again, here's the thought. The middle class is a construct, something designed by rich people to make poor people think that they're not poor. <laughs> I'm enjoying this, but you all don't look like you're enjoying this. Think about it. A person who's in the middle class, they drive actually a really nice car. Maybe that's you. They live in actually a real the best neighborhood they've lived in in all of their life, but they don't own their own home. If you were to actually sit down and calculate, their net worth isn't what it could be. When you have all of the liabilities against all of the assets, it doesn't amount to much. What the Bible said thousands and thousands of years ago is this truth that the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is serving to the lender. And obviously, you've got to be the rich in order to lend. And you must be the poor if you're borrowing. So if you're not completely and totally debt-free in your life, then I submit to you that you could come up to another level. Just a thought. Let me give you some scripture. Before I do, what does it mean to be rich? I, I know one of the great definitions that has marked my life about being rich is simple because you could define it here in the United States and it be something different in another country. Or you could define it in an African or, a, you know, a, a South American, a different place in the, in the world, and we wouldn't consider that rich at all. But, but what does it mean? You know, how could you define it? The simplest definition I could call is a full supply. The quick definition for me, to be rich means you have more than enough. Conversely, what does it mean to be poor? It means to not have enough, barely enough, or just enough. Whoo, it's quiet in this church. But I'm here to tell you that poverty is not the will of God for your life. Living in a place of barely having enough not having enough or having just enough is not God's plan. He actually wants you, longs for you, has designed for you to be rich, to have a full supply more than you need. I was going to title this mini message today to let not your heart be deceived. Because again, if you're functioning in the middle class mindset that because you have a nice car that you've borrowed for and are paying against, you don't own the car, you're paying for it. The bank owns it. And then if you miss a number of payments, they will come pick it up. Oh. <laughs> you, you got a nice house? Man, best house ever. You're living in that nice house. But let there be a loss of income or a debilitating you know, situation, something that cripples the economy, and you might find yourself in a place that you never imagined that you would be. Why? Because you're not functioning at that level that God intends. You've been duped into thinking that you're okay when you should be using your faith to come up another level. Let me give you another verse of scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 9. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Why? So that you, through his Middle class state might become middle class. Oh, my, man, my jokes aren't doing good today. <laughs> no, he became poor so that you through, come on, look at it, you through his poverty might become what? Rich. 
in 3 John 2, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. When the Bible talks about prosperity, it is often talking about financial well-being. You can tell by this particular verse in 3 John 2, he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. What is he talking about? He's really talking about your financial well-being in all things and be in health. That's physical prosperity, right? When your body is working well, when, when things are functioning, when you can have health and strength, right? And But then he says, not only do I want you to have financial prosperity, I want you to have physical prosperity just as your spirit and your mind prospers. So it's prosperity on every level. But notice he started, I wish above all things that you would have financial prosperity. And so if you've resisted this direction where we've been talking about you being able to live on a level that God desires, I ask you to open your heart again to what the Bible says. Jesus became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich, not middle class. So if you find yourself particularly in what you would call not poor, not rich, but middle class, I want to challenge you. Believe with us to come up another level. God's calling you up higher. Amen. He wants you to walk in his blessings and fulfillment. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, you all didn't get excited about this. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, man. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 13, it says this. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. Look up at me once again. Here's the reality. The rich rule over the poor. The borrower is servant to the lender. You can immediately see that the rich refers to the lender and the poor refers to the borrower. So maybe you got a good job. Amen. Thank God for what the government has done. Maybe it helped you through, you know, a pretty tight time. But God wants to get you to the place where you're independently wealthy not dependent upon any source other than God alone. Amen? He is your only source. He wants you to be in a position, as Deuteronomy 28 and 13 says, where you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Come on. God wants you to come up higher. Don't resist the message of prosperity. Decide in your heart to learn with us the laws of abundance and prosperity. There are actually laws that govern abundance. You having more than enough and laws that govern you living a prosperous life. In conclusion, in John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come so that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. In the Amplified, he says, I have come that you might have life to the full until it overflows. Another translation says, I have come that you might have and experience a better life. I'm challenging. Come up. Don't get comfortable in your retirement don't be okay living with a fixed income don't be okay with going with the status quo break through to another level that God desires and has designed for your life to be the head come on church and not to tell to be above and not beneath amen so rich or poor which are you? There is no middle class. Did I do okay with that today? 
Come on, y'all can do better than that. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for all of those that are part of Faith Family Church that have received me as their pastor. And we believe.